Welcome back. And now let's take a look at primitive data types. Primitive, if you want to picture it or give it some kind of form, you could think of a caveman or a cave itself. It's very basic is all it means. And without these basic values, you will be unable to produce any program. Every single programming language has the basic set of primitive types and JavaScript is no different. And for JavaScript, we have string, number, a boolean, null, undefined, and nan, all of which we'll review in this lecture. So to begin, let's go ahead and open up our console so we can go ahead and start talking to the JavaScript just-in-time compiler. Now inside of here, what I'm able to do is push primitive values to the just-in-time compiler and I should get a primitive value returned. That means that that was an accepted primitive value. That's very important. If it errors, it means that we did something wrong. So we're going to take a look at the string first of all. This is the most popular primitive type value. So to define a string, you can either use double quotes or single quotes. It's entirely up to you, but you must have a starting quote and an ending quote. And anything outside of those quotes will be classed as JavaScript syntax. This is very important and you'll see why in just a second. But right now I'll just use double quotes and I'll say hello world. When I hit return, you'll notice that I get this nice red string saying hello world. That means it was accepted. That's a primitive type. Again, all I need to do is just press the up arrow to previously receive what I just typed in. That's a little bit of a trick right there for you. And you can see now I can define it with single quotation marks. Yes, it returned a string with double quotation marks. That's just how the JIT compiler returns the string. However, it's still an accepted string primitive. Now, on top of this, you also must make sure that you do have that starting and ending quote exactly the same. So, for example, if I have a single starting quote and an ending double quote, you will get an error. This is not allowed. Now, also, let's say we have lots of stuff in our console. You can right click anywhere in the console and say clear console. This is just a nice little concept for you. Now, you're probably going, what about if a string contains quotation marks? Well, what you can do is you can use double quotes inside of single quotes. So I can say he said and then put in the double quotes. Hello, like so. This again is an accepted string. And likewise, you can do the reverse. You can have single quotes inside of the double quotes as well. If I hit return, there you go. It's an accepted string. Now you may have a little gotcha right here. So I'm gonna clear that console again. That is, if you have the same quotation marks inside of the opening and closing quotation marks, this is a big problem. So let's go ahead and press the up arrow again. And it's brought back previously what I had. So now let's say that what I've done, and this is a common error and a common mistake, even amongst professionals, and that is they've included the double quotes inside of the double quote exterior quotes. So what's gonna happen here is the fact that we're gonna get a syntax error. This isn't valid syntax in JavaScript, and the reason being is because what it's done is JavaScript has interpreted these two quotation marks and then these set of quotation marks. So you've actually defined two strings, and also you've defined a bit of JavaScript. And this is absolutely 100% invalid JavaScript. Now I'll talk about concatenating strings together, but however, let's say I concatenate this together and turn it into valid JavaScript and hit return. You'll notice we still get an error, but this time it's not an unexpected error, which means that you've actually typed a command in wrong. This time it's actually trying to look for hello. So this is part of JavaScript. And what it's tried to do is go through the window object and it's tried to find the property hello for example. It can't find it and therefore you get an error. Let's clear that console and fix this issue. So the way that you include double quotes inside of double quotes or single quotes inside of single quotes is you escape characters. This is very important. So 
let's go ahead and open up double quotes and say he said again and we're going to go with some double quotes and say hello again we know that this is invalid now what i'm going to do is put a backslash before each quotation mark inside so what you're doing is something called escaping you're telling the javascript compiler ignore this character don't treat it as javascript or ignore it completely it's just part of the string and the same goes for this quotation mark so now these quotation marks are unaffected this is still the opening quotation mark and this is still the closing quotation mark if i hit return you'll notice it's valid likewise i could do the same thing with the single quotation marks just like so just to prove this and there you have your string so you can escape certain characters this is very very important and if you do get errors when trying to create strings like this then you pretty much know you've not escaped a certain character and namely that will be a quotation mark whether it be a single or a double quotation mark you must make sure that you escape those characters now you may be going what about if i want to include a backslash in my string well if you wanted to do that let's say i created something go to and then i put in the backslash like so and hit return you'll notice the backslash did not actually appear so the way to get around that is to put in another backslash just like so and there you go you will get the backslash so a little bit tricky but overall this is just basic string stuff you do have to have that backslash in there to escape certain characters tell the javascript compiler ignore the next character and also don't put spaces in here so for example let's go ahead and bring back one of these strings all right so we're bringing back the single quotation so this is valid but let's say i put a space in here between the backslash and the quotation mark you will get an error that backslash has to be directly next to the quotation mark so i did previously show you how to do concatenation real quick and even though this has nothing to do with primitive types it's worth just showing you this so if I go ahead and create two strings so I can say hello and then I can put in the plus sign and this means concatenate or join together and then I can even concatenate a different type of string that's defined by the single quotes and say world hit return you'll notice the two strings were concatenated or joined together now the next basic primitive we're going to take a look at is numbers and you have two types of numbers you have whole integers and you also have floating point numbers so what's the difference well an integer is a whole number so that could be a minimum of one that is a whole number i could say 100 1000 and so on and so forth these are all whole numbers or integers as it were however let's go ahead and create a floating point number which just means a decimal point number you see a lot of this in currency so i could say perhaps 10.5 that is a floating point number so wherever you see the decimal you know that this is not a whole integer it is in fact a floating point number so now that we've discovered the difference between integers and floating point numbers there is an issue with floating point numbers not integers however with floating point numbers due to the binary structure of the computer it can actually be a little bit of a problem now we're not going to go too in depth with this but i am going to show you some issues so for example we can go ahead and simply type 0.2 and just like when we concatenated a string i can say plus and when i say plus on a number it means add just like you would typically expect and i'm going to add 0 0.1 onto 0 0.2 and you'll notice i get 0 0.3 0 0 0 0 0 da, 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 um, 4. this is an issue it should just be 0 0.3 and this isn't just a fault with javascript it's actually a fault with all sorts of programming languages javascript isn't the only one that suffers from this now overall javascript and other programming languages are good with floating point numbers so for example 0 0.25 plus 0 0.1 
will actually give you the correct value. It's only certain floating point values that can cause an issue. However, this can cause a problem when you consider the fact that you can work with currencies and these are very, very precise. When you create applications to do with currency, they have to be bang on. So how would you resolve that issue? Well, typically you'd turn it into a whole integer. So you'd always keep fractional numbers or floating point numbers or numbers with the decimal point in as whole integers and then you would divide them. So what you'd have to do is write an equation like this. You'd say two plus one and then outside of the brackets, you'd type in divide by 10 and that will give you 0 0.3. Now, there's a lot to mathematics in any programming language, including JavaScript. Now, what I want you to do is just take away from this that you have two types of numbers. You have whole integers and you have floating point numbers. Try to ignore all of this other mathematical operations that I've shown you. That's for another lecture, but at least now you've been exposed to some of these operators and also you've been exposed to the basic primitive number type. Next up, we have the Boolean primitive type. So what is a Boolean? Well, if I say something is true or false, that's a Boolean. If I ask you a question and I want an answer from you, that is either going to be true or false, you are giving me a Boolean answer. So if you say it's true, that's a Boolean primitive. And if you say false, that's also a Boolean primitive. That's all Boolean means, true or false, that's it. So what I can go ahead and do is type in true, and I can also type in false. I don't get an error because JavaScript understands that these are not strings, these are the Boolean types, which is true and false. Very simple, not very complex at all. Now, why are these important? Well, if you think about it, what we can do is we can say grab something and check to make sure that it has something. And then if it has something, then we get a return of true and we can go ahead and do something, perform an action. If, however, that something doesn't have what we ask it for, then it's false. And therefore, we can either do something else or we could do nothing at all. So this allows our application to think and programmatically go through the data. And your mind works in the same way. You do it pretty much every day without even noticing it. For example, crossing the road, a simple task but you are using Boolean logic. I look right, because I'm British, first, and then I go ahead and check to make sure there's no cars coming from the right, true or false. Then, if true, I'm going to now look left, and I'm gonna see if that's clear, true or false. If both are true, I then cross the road. So we ourselves use this logical type of Boolean thinking. So now let's take a look at null and undefined. What do these values mean? Well, these are again primitive values, but they're special types of values. And they mean there's no value. I know that sounds very, very strange. But what I want you to do is think of an empty box. If you go up into your loft and you have a look around, I'm sure you may find a few empty boxes with absolutely nothing in. They are a container, so you do have a box, a container, but it has nothing inside of it. It is essentially null. Now we'll talk about this in variables because it will make a lot more sense, but essentially you can have a variable, a box, a container, if you will, and it may not have a value assigned to it, meaning there's nothing in the box. Therefore, when you actually call that variable, so you grab the box and you open it in programming, it will say null, it will return null or it could return undefined. And whether you get null or undefined, it means you've just called an empty box, you've opened an empty box essentially, that's all you've done. Now, why do we have null and undefined? Well, you have many different JavaScript JIT compilers. So IE has a JavaScript compiler, Chrome has a JavaScript compiler, and all the different browser vendors have a different compiler. 
And some compilers, and in fact most compilers, just support null. However, they can return undefined. And this is very, very important because if you want to check, let's say that container has something in it, you need to check whether it is null or undefined. That's very, very important because they are two technically different values that mean the same thing, an empty box. I know it's one of those little quirks about the programming language, and that's because we have all these different browser vendors interpreting the JavaScript syntax. However, you just need to know that null or undefined is an empty box. It's that simple. Next up, we have NAN, which you spell NAN with capital N. So you say N lowercase a and then uppercase N. The reason why I'm being fanatical about the capitalization is because JavaScript is extremely case sensitive. So that means if I was to type NAN all lowercase, I get an error or NAN all uppercase, I get an error because it's going to look at the window object and try to find that property which it will not find and therefore we get an error. So again, JavaScript is very, very case sensitive. Now, what is NAN? Well, NAN stands for not a number. This value will appear when you try to do illegal operations within a mathematical statement. So for example, let's say I tried to divide a string by four. So I say hello, which is the string, then I put in the backslash outside of the string, so it's not escaping any characters. It is in fact dividing by four. And guess what? We get nan because you performed an illegal operation. Now it's not a serious error, but whenever you see nan being returned, you know that you've done something illegal in your mathematical equations, if you will. So that's exactly what nan is. Now nan is really stupid in terms of the fact that nan isn't even equal to nan and we'll talk about this later on. However, nan is a very stupid number type, but however, it can be a very informative number type because it lets us know when we've done something wrong in our mathematical equations. So there we have it, the primitives, the basics, the simple values, the simpletons, but now it's time to evolve.